Hey, it's Seth with Stuff Seth Makes, and I don't know about you guys, but I've been wanting to try laser engraving for a while. So, I was pretty excited when Creality reached out to me and asked if I wanted to try out their Falcon 2 10 watt diode laser. Of course I did, and that's what I've got running right here. In this video, I'm gonna go over a few of the features of this particular laser, and I'm gonna show you some of the cool little things that I've been playing with on it, and I've got a couple of tips or hacks that should be helpful when making certain kinds of cuts. So, let's get all lasered up. Unboxing the Falcon 2 was pretty straightforward. Everything was packed in there nice and snug, so let me show you what actually came in the box. This here is the X-axis rail assembly. This is the control box with the brains, and it's got an emergency stop button in case things get out of control and you need to stop your project immediately. This is the Y-axis with the belt on it and some other frame parts. This is a little air compressor for the air assist feature which gets fed through this piece of tubing. There's three legs and at first I thought one was missing, but the fourth leg is already part of the control box. We've got a USB cable, some zip ties, and a couple of small wood samples. This is a little aluminum gauge to set the distance between the laser and your workpiece, and it's able to hook onto the front of the machine so you don't lose it. Nice. They include a little box with hardware and some various tools needed for assembly. It comes with a little thumb drive, but it's set up for Windows and I use a Mac so I couldn't use it. Moving on. Got some super stylish safety glasses, and of course, the laser itself. Finally, there's a power supply and some documentation, and also a pack of fun little stickers. The assembly of the whole unit goes pretty quickly. If you're not filming for a YouTube video like I am, you can probably put it together in about 10 or 15 minutes. The instructions are okay, but the printing is pretty small, so if you're not familiar with assembling a machine like this, a couple of the steps might not be super clear. Let me show you a couple things, and hopefully that'll help make the assembly a little bit easier for you. When you're working with these rails and belts, it might be difficult to tell what you're gonna do with the belts. There's a diagram in the booklet, but it's really small. So just make sure you send the belts under the first black plastic wheel, and then over the silver geared wheel, and then back under the second black plastic wheel. The belts are toothed on one side also, so you just wanna make sure that that side of the belt is facing down. If you're not careful, it can get twisted without you realizing it, so pay attention. These little T-nuts secure the loose end of the belt in the track. When the belt is in the track, however, the nuts can be a pretty tight fit. And since their nuts are so small, they can be a little bugger to get in there. But just be patient with it, and if you need to use another tool or something to push it in, just be careful not to slip and jab yourself. You definitely don't want to get jabbed. Also, be careful not to pull the belt so tight that you break it. When you've got it where you want it, just use one of the included Allen wrenches and tighten the nuts. But not too tight, just tight enough. The laser module itself will slide on and mount to this bracket right here. There's a couple of screws on the laser that you tighten with your fingers to lock the laser in place. In order to know where to set it, you just measure the thickness of your material, and I use a set of digital calibers for this. Rest the laser on the appropriate spot on the gauge and tighten the screws. Now you can attach one end of the hose to the little air pump and the other end to the little port on the laser. The power cord for the air pump plugs right into the control box and you can see right next to it, there's a little dial to control the airflow. More on that a little later in the video. I use the zip ties to keep the air tube secured to the laser's wire harness. For this step, you wanna leave enough slack in the air hose to allow for a full range of motion by the laser, but not so much slack that it droops down and sags. Lastly, connect the little power connector to the laser head and assembly is complete. Creality was super generous and they also sent me a couple other accessories. One accessory was the metal grid. This grid allows the heat and the air to have some place to go as the laser is cutting. And it's especially helpful when using the air assist feature. The other accessory they sent was an enclosure to put over the Falcon laser. It goes together like a little tent, but just a quick word of advice, the bags with the sticks are labeled. Don't take the sticks out of the bag. Leave them in their labeled bags while you assemble. Trust me, it'll make it easier. The enclosure has a laser safe, transparent orange zippered lid for easy access to your project. And it also comes with a USB powered fan that mounts to the enclosure and sucks the smoky air out. Where does the air go? It goes wherever you send the included duct. My recommendation, send it outside so your shop doesn't fill up with smoke. <laughs> Here you can see how the enclosure sits over the Falcon laser. 
And for the sake of the video, I'm not gonna use it now because it'll interfere with the video, but stick around till the end and you can see it in use. So as much as I wanted to just jump right in and start lasering everything, I figure it'd be a good idea to do a couple of these test cards. And that way you can see based on your material thickness, how fast you should be running your laser and also how much laser power you should be shooting out of the nozzle. So this is the first cut test I did and the circle doesn't quite connect perfectly. So it's, it's sort of an oblong circle. I don't know if you can tell in this video, but everything that's going left to right has a little bit of a wave to it, a little bit of a curve. It's probably obvious right there. And if I hold a straight edge up to it, you can see that's not a very straight line. So I figured I'd check the tension on the belts and sure enough, there was a little bit more slack than I figured probably should be. So I just came back and I loosened those little nuts back here and snugged up the belt just a little bit more and then retightened the nuts. So that took care of the problem with the circles. The circles were looking good now, but I was still getting the horizontal curve. And so I had one other thing I wanted to check out. So when I came over here to this head unit, I noticed that there was a little bit of slack in this part of the structure here. So when it went left to right, there was a little bit of play and I wondered if that could be part of the problem. So right behind the wheels that ride along the axis, there is these nuts right here. I wondered if these were eccentric nuts. In the little toolkit they provide, they give you this wrench, but in the instructions, they don't tell you anything about what the wrench is for or anything like that. So I found that it's the perfect size for these nuts. If you don't know what eccentric nuts are, they're basically nuts with the hole in the middle is off-centered. So you can make these little adjustments one way or another, and that can help to make your fit better or just give you those little minor adjustments that you need. And so I did that to these, and that snugged this up real nice. So there was no more play and I ran some more tests and sure enough, we're looking a lot better. So if you find that you're running into any problems like that, I would say check your belts and check those eccentric nuts. I'm just kind of surprised that they didn't say anything about any of that adjustment in the manual. So I think there could be some improvements made there. But now that we've made these adjustments and things are looking good, we can finally start cutting and having a little bit more fun. So one of the very first things I cut was these little things. These weird shaped little items are hold down pins for your metal grid. I bought an SVG file on Etsy for like a buck 49 and it came with several different sizes so you can see which size works best for your grid. I love how crisp and precise these laser cuts are. These little things are great if you have a thin piece of material that may be warped. You just push these little pins down into your grid and the little arm holds down your workpiece. Just make sure you use the right size pin. You want it to be a snug fit, but you don't want to force it and break the pin. I'm gonna do another test card, but with some thinner material. Ideally, you'd have one of these test cards for every thickness and material that you might plan on using. I'm getting there little by little. <laughs> so here's the cut test on that super thin stuff, and you can see it was really easy for it to cut these things out. In fact, I can probably like poke a couple of these and they'll come right out. And that's okay because on this particular case, all I really wanted to do is see what is gonna cut through all this. And you can see how clean all of the edges are on that. And that has to do with the air assist, which I will go into in just a moment. So this is the air assist module. And what that does is really, it just sends air through this tube. The tube comes up and like I showed you before, it's attached to here and then it comes down into the side of the laser. The air assist kind of has two purposes really. One of them is safety, and that's just because when you're cutting with your laser, obviously it's generating heat on whatever material that you're cutting, and the air assist kind of helps to blow that out, keep it cool, and even though this isn't a crazy powerful laser, you never know, it could still kind of catch fire and ignite your workpiece, so it's nice to have that safety feature built in with the air assist. Another purpose of having the air assist is when you're cutting things out, the laser will be cutting through it like that. And the air is sort of clearing the path so your laser can have a little bit more of a clean cut. So do you think you can tell where I had the air assist on and where I didn't? Obviously here, the air assist was off and then I turned it on over here. So big, big difference when doing cutouts. Now that I'm getting this thing figured out and things are getting dialed in, I think it's time to make a real thing. It'll be a simple thing, but let's make a real thing instead of running all these tests. Well, 
look at that. Well, that's fun. Those cuts are insane. I can't believe how clean this is. It's so fun to be finally doing something with the laser. This is a good little project, but I think I need to elevate this one. So this is cute, but I'm gonna try to take it to the next level. Let's see what I can do. With the parts cut out, I can pop out the waist, and these cuts are super clean. On this wood grain design, the little pieces are so thin, and it's crazy how intricate these pieces are. Even though I'm not using these skinny little pieces, I'm still super impressed with the intricacy of these cuts. Now I can take my first layer, add my second layer, and add my third layer to see how it'll look. Cool. Once I add some stain and some paint and glue the layers together, this ornament is all done, and it looks awesome. So now with this made, you've got a couple pieces of waste, but you don't have to waste them. Even though they're real small, you can still get a couple other small parts out of them. So put them back on the grid and make something else. I don't know, maybe some earrings. And who doesn't like a pair of laser cut earrings? or maybe even something small like a pin with your favorite dog's face on it. One thing I've done with my CNC machine that I'm gonna try to do with the laser is have a constant permanent zero point for my X and Y axis. You know, with the laser, you can say home and it's gonna go over to this home point. I'm thinking that there's gonna be times where I wanna put my workpiece in there, do the engraving, take it out, put the next one back in. Engrave it, take it out, engrave it, take it out, engrave it, take it out. You know what I mean? And repeat that process several times depending on the project. Now I know people make jigs for different things, like I've seen people do pencils, keychain, bookmarks, or things like that, and that's great, but sometimes I think you might not want a jig with multiples, you might just wanna do one at a time, maybe if they're bigger pieces or whatever. So let me show you my idea and let me kinda of walk you through how I'm gonna do that so that I get a constant zero on the X, Y, and this thing will home and cut my pieces perfectly every time. I'm gonna start with a scrap piece of some pretty thin plywood. I'm gonna place it on my grid, but with the edges on the frame of the grid. I'm also making some marks where I wanna drill the holes, and then of course, I'll actually drill the holes. With my holes drilled in the wood, I can reference those holes to make some new marks on the metal frame, and then drill some pilot holes and screw down the plywood. While I'm thinking about it, I'm also gonna drill pilot holes on two sides of the frame. Next, I grabbed some of these Z clips that I had on hand for furniture making. They just happen to be the perfect size to fit into the pattern on the legs of the laser. So I'm gonna put them in place and then I'm gonna screw them down to the table because for what I'm doing, I wanna make sure that nothing ever moves. Now I've got some small L brackets and what I wanna do is get the grid and the backer plate lined up as evenly as possible into the machine. But I am just eyeballing it and that'll be good enough in this case. Then I can use those L brackets to secure the grid to the table. So now with all of our anchor points, we got everything secured down. We've got our wood piece screwed to the grid here. And so now we're looking pretty good. This whole thing is solid. So with all this set now and my woods here, what I can do is I'll send this back home and that's gonna go over to its home position. And that's where it goes every single time I click home. So I know it goes there. And then I drew myself in the software, I drew a rectangle that's a certain size. And when I frame it, I can see that it's gonna come and I see my little blue laser that's with the framing feature. And that's just outlining where it's gonna go. So I'm just gonna set go and I'll show you. You can see the laser is cutting the rectangle that I just drew in Lightburn. Although now that I'm thinking about it, I guess I could have just drawn a couple lines and it could have cut that faster instead of doing the whole rectangle. <laughs> oh well, I'll remember that for the next time. Now I can jog the laser over to a different corner so that it's out of the way and I can take off the piece that I just cut out. 
As you can see, now I've got a perfect corner and I can put this to work right away with some drink coasters that I made for a recent furniture client. Check it out. With the engraving on the coasters done, I was thinking, you know, when you use a coaster, it doesn't sit wood to wood. There's usually a pad or a felt thing underneath it. So I picked up some sticky back felt and you can see I did a couple tests there. They were successful. So I'm gonna throw a piece of felt over here on the laser and I'm gonna cut out some circles and that way they can go on the back of these coasters. All right, so let's see what we got here. All these are cut out. And I got my perfect little felt discs here. That's perfect. So what we're looking at, here's the coaster. Here's my felt disc. And look at that, it's gonna fit right over that. So I just gotta peel the sticky back off and place it on there. And that's a nice little thank you gift for my clients. Well, I've been using the Creality Falcon 2 10 watt laser now for a couple of weeks and this has been a really fun machine to get familiar with and I don't even think I've scratched the surface of what I can do with this machine. That's just going to come with time and practice. But I finally got it moved from my temporary location over there and I got it over here inside the enclosure just like I said I would. I've used it a couple of times with the enclosure and it's been pretty nice because now that I've got the duct that I can send out the garage door when I'm running my projects all the smoke stays inside. I usually leave a little gap here. I don't zip it all the way up and that way it can suck air in, suck the air out and send it outside so I don't have to smell it. Perfect. I'm really excited to use this machine a lot more. I've got plans to make some things on Etsy. I wanna use some different materials. I've got a lot of really interesting wood that I wanna try laser engraving certain things on. And then I'm also looking forward to seeing how I can incorporate laser engraved stuff onto other projects. So maybe there's a piece of furniture that I'll build and I can incorporate some laser engraved design on that. Who knows, the sky's the limit really. And of course, I gotta give a huge shout out to Creality for sending me this laser to try out. If anybody out there is looking for an entry level laser to get started with, I would definitely say check out the Creality Falcon 2 10 watt laser. And they claim that this is a beginner friendly machine and it is, it's very beginner friendly. I'm a beginner still, but you're not gonna be a beginner for long because once you start using it, you're gonna start thinking of all kinds of stuff that you can do with it and it's really gonna take your creativity and your workshop to the next level. So thanks for watching everybody. Be sure to check out the description for all kinds of links, links to the laser, links to my other stuff. And of course, I hope you'll consider subscribing so that you can see my future projects where I may incorporate some awesome laser engraved stuff. So until next time, I'm out of here.